so just quickly that year, there was a lot of figuring out what the impacts were gonna be on the food system, advocating for relief for those impacts, um, and then also advocating for improvements to the implementation of that relief. Um, in this coming year, we're seeing a lot of opportunity. Um, <clears throat> some of the goals we're working towards are, um, again, COVID aid, which is distributed equitably, uh, debt relief for small farmers, more accountability for USDA, uh, particularly on matters of racial discrimination, um, stronger local and regional food systems, in particular, as Tyler mentioned, um, infrastructure support for things like processing, as well as storage and transportation. Um, as Tyler mentioned, corporate accountability, um, and also policy that helps farmers be climate heroes. Um, and we do our work in a number of ways. There is that element of trying to keep farmers and the general public informed about what's going on on the Hill. Um, can be a little hard to keep track of when it's not your full-time job. Um, so letting folks know where and when it might be helpful to advocate with elected representatives um, or contribute a public comment. Um, so action alerts, things like that. Um, and as Tyler mentioned, also organizing organizing meetings directly between farmers and their members of Congress. So we're working on a fly in this week. Um, we also do grass tops advocacy uh, where we have built relationships with a member of Congress or their staff. Um, and we can either go directly to them with concerns or they often come to us with specific questions or wanting feedback in an area where they know that we have expertise. Um, and we participate uh, with a number of coalitions. So sort of pursuing all of the strategies there. Uh, one example of how we do this work is that um, many of the financial crisis cases, um, which Craig and Benny, our farmer advocates work on, um, are discrimination cases. So uh, a Farm Services Administration loan officer could delay a farmer's annual operating loan until it's too late for that loan to do any good, um, and the farmer then loses the season or an agent might forget to tell a farmer of color about programs which they are eligible for um, while all of the white farmers in the area are getting told about the program. Um, I spoke with one farmer of color who didn't hear about programs he should have been able to take advantage of until he spoke with an agent outside his county. Um, and when he asked his local agent about those programs, the agent said, where did you hear about that? Like who let the secret out basically? Um, so that leads us to advocate for policies like there should be an annual discrimination review of every FSA loan officer's portfolio, or there should be a report comparing how long it takes for different loan applications to be completed, um, and that report should be broken down by race and gender. Um, so there, there are things that we can advocate for both administratively directly with USDA and legislatively through Congress. Um, sometimes Obviously, depending on the administration, you can get things done faster administratively, but it can be more lasting to have those things written into statute by Congress so that the next administration doesn't just get to decide to stop doing them. Um, so we're seeing a lot of those opportunities coming up in 2021, uh, both in Congress and um, via direct engagement with the administration. Um, and it is also the right time to be framing these larger issues and conversations and building the foundations for the next farm bill in the hope that we can um, have a farm bill that promotes more systemic change um, and doesn't just prop up the status quo that we know is not working for so many farmers. Um, and we think our issues have momentum and support um, and in partnership with farmers and with partner organizations and also with you all, um, we're going to push them as far as we can. Um, so thanks so much for coming. It's uh, great to get to share about our work with y'all. <laughs>